Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Today, we are going to be continuing our Tuesday look at the Octurian channeling done by Tom Kenyon, and this is coming from the Octurian Anthology. We are on Azeron this morning, and so if you are following along with us, that's going to be starting on page 117 with Azeron, the Octurian Azeron. But of course, before we get started, a special word from our sponsors. My Uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired, after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I'm 
feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed, but what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected God's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body knows knows exactly where it needs to send the redox, what part of your body is wounded, what part of your body isn't so stable. And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes, friends, I am 40 years old and as, as the aging process does occur, the body starts to droop a little bit. And no, I've never had children, so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child, but they still are. You know, I got boobs and they, 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 they are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare.
Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement. But from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product, Product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and Jay or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. We start this channeling off with a quote from Sunat Kumara. You as an individual affect the collective by how you think, how you feel, and how you act in the world. Make no mistake about it. Every single human being on your planet is affecting your collective perception of reality and the possibilities for your collective destiny. This happens at a micro quantum level. And while it is true that political figures and religious figures can move the world more directly and seemingly more powerfully than any individual or group of individuals, this is increasingly a type of illusion. I say this because your technology is empowering individuals in new ways never imagined by those who created this technology. Azaron, the Octurian healer. I find it odd that I have been requested to speak. I was known as Dr. Azaron. I was a medical officer on the Octurian starship, but during a skirmish, an outright battle with the Faria star travelers, I was killed. This occurred in protection of Earth. I am now known simply as Azaron. For I am now in the 10th dimension and my tethers to my Acturian reality are few. It is as if I am standing outside of the Acturian dream. And from this vantage point, what seems so vitally real with its mission now seems like a distant fantasy. It is difficult to describe my nature as a 10th dimensional light being because there are so few references. Through the ninth dimension, we have what we experience as form. But in the tenth and higher dimensions, our Octurian form, which are human-like, become geometric patterns of light. My transition to the tenth dimensional reality was abrupt. I suspect it is similar to the disorientation a human being feels when he or she dies. The sensory input from my body suddenly stopped. And for me, it was like walking through a long corridor with steps that moved up. And even as I was walking up these steps, I knew that I was dying and making my transition into a higher vibratory level of existence. There was in that moment a choice point. I could have chosen to reincarnate as an Octurian, or I could choose to go on to a higher dimensional reality. I chose the latter partly because I was curious. Curiosity has always been my greatest ally. It's what made me excel as an Octurian medicine. But now that I am no longer Octurian, but more like a rotating sphere of light with Octurian dispositions, I am freed from the constraint of my previous mission, and I am in a place of self-reflection. I find it most interesting from my vantage point that Sunat Kumara is rethinking some of the choices he made and weighing the needs of the heart against the needs of the mission. 
Octarians are obsessed with missions. It is in their very nature. And so when Sunat Kumar entered his heart into the equation, it is no small matter. As a civilization, we are evolving like all civilizations. And either one is evolving or one is devolving. One cannot remain in a static state very long. As one of the elders, Sunat Kumara's contemplation is one that many advanced individuals in Octarian culture are considering. It is interesting for me to be outside of this dilemma. As a 10th dimensional light being, my relationship to others are far more different order than those are I experienced as an Octarian. I do not process information in the same way as I did before. I do not have a heart and mind as separate categories of experience. I am luminous awareness with empathetic potential. As I said, I am new to this 10th dimensional reality. And even while I question why I would have been asked to share my impression, I will continue to reveal the nature of the 10th dimensional reality as I experience it. There is a great wounding of the Octarian heart. It has arisen from a dichotomy between the heart and the mind. And I do believe that a similar wounding of the heart exists for many human beings as well. Well, 50% of human beings are organic portals, so therefore they have no heart center or, or energetic or emotional um, information center to learn from and i'll place that video if you're not familiar with the organic portal um, theory i will place the video with mr fox down in the description box below for those who want to go back and watch it when i was an octarian and experienced myself as an octarian i lived and breathed the mission whatever it was if my heart questioned i would subdue it with my will in order to serve the mission for an octarian this sounds almost like a reflex it was culturally expected. A little sociopathic there, but, you know, I'm glad they're starting to consider the heart because without the heart, we can't gauge whether a mission is positive or negative. Without the heart, we can't gauge whether what we're doing is benefiting ourselves or hurting ourselves or if it's benefiting others or hurting others. So it's really important that any species learns to consider the heart and not just the mind. But now the older members of our civilization, such as Sumat Kumara and others, are questioning the wisdom of this dichotomy. It's an odd situation for my fellow Octurians. I observe this from a state of consciousness that is outside the Octurian dilemma and outside the human dilemma, dilemma of heart versus mind. There is a rising in the Octurian mind, a collective wave of sadness. Although we do not experience emotions the same ways as you, we possess them, and sometimes they possess us. Running parallel to this wave of sadness about the Octarian dichotomy between the heart and the mission is our collective commitment to protect your sector of space from what we call the nefarious star travelers. Your world is already infected and manipulated enough by these types of interferences. It is a very odd thing, being a 10th dimensional light being, I still have tethers, emotionally speaking, to the Arcturian civilization and to the crew of the starship on which I served. And I can sense in them, through my empathetic potential, varying degrees of discomfort. And this discomfort is arising from a collective recognition that something is amiss. If I were to summarize the Arcturian dilemma at this point in time, I would say it is based upon the fundamental question. How do you be true to the mission without abandoning the heart? How do you be true to your heart without abandoning the mission? I have also been asked to share my impressions and my new understandings regarding the nature of medicine. I find it oddly amusing, curious, and comforting that my inclinations regarding the practice of medicine have continued with me into the 10th dimensional reality, but here I have no apparatus. There are no tools. There is nothing to hold and manipulate for I do not have hands. I do not have a body. I am a rotating sphere of light. And yet very shortly after my death, 
after I had become aware of this 10th dimensional reality to some extent, I found in myself an arising of the desire to heal. I found that I could manipulate light in new ways through the union of my intention and the actual light filamentions of my body. This spherical rotating field of light. Because I had a deep connection to my fellow Octurians on the starship, I was drawn back to them. And so I began to visit my former patients. And I would do this when they were sleeping. And I continued my work of healing without any apparati, but solely through my will and the nature of light. I hope they ha he had consent from the people he's working on. You cannot even send... You know, the Law of One talks about this. You cannot even pray for somebody unless they give you permission to pray for them. You cannot send them light and love unless they give you consent to do that. To do that is taking a negative path because it's interfering with the free will choice of the person you're quote unquote praying for or sending healing vibes to. Now, if they ask you to pray for them or ask you to send them healing vibes, then awesome. But if they don't ask you to or ask you not to, then you need to stop because that's negative. That's you interfering. That's you meddling with somebody else's karma. And all karma is, is our work. So I hope that Azeron got their permission, their consent to continue to work on his old patients. I am aware now that human beings have higher dimensional healers available to them as well. And much of this healing takes place while humans are sleeping. I mention this because you can call to yourself higher dimensional healers. You can request their assistance before you go to sleep. Yes, if some being is working on you while you're asleep and you didn't ask for that, then that's not a good being. That's a negative being. So you have to ask. You have to request for them to work on you while you sleep. You must ask. It cannot be given. There you go. So Azeron just said it. So thank you, Azeron. You must ask or it cannot be given. Consent, consent, consent. You have to have consent. So I am putting you on notice, you, the human, that there are higher dimensional healers available to you, but you must ask. And for some of you, you must transcend your belief that you don't deserve assistance. But that is the whole topic unto itself. And so I would say to you, if you wish assistance from these higher dimensional healers, ask for their assistance, just as you are going to sleep. Ask specifically for what you wish assistance with. You do this in your mind through your thoughts. Your calling to them for their assistance gives them permission to work with you. For some of you more sensitive in nature, their work will be apparent. You will sense their presence either energetically or in dream time. For those of you not sensitive in this way, you may simply notice an improvement. The degree of improvement depends upon the expertise of the higher dimensional healer and on your willingness to accept healing. And so I would say that if you experiment with these types of healing, that you specifically request the highest level of healing possible, and you request that the higher dimensional healer who works with you have the highest level of expertise possible. And then the other side of this equation is to root out for yourself any thoughts and impressions that you do not deserve this type of healing. That's a big one. That's a big one. Engaging these two areas will secure for you the highest level of healing possible. All right, you guys. So I actually really want to hear your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. Have you been requesting healing? Uh, make sure I'm going to add to this. Just as there are beings of the highest good around you at all times, there are also beings of the highest evil around you at all time thus is the polarity of third density so when you are putting in a request to be healed at night make sure it's it's beings that are here for your highest good just make sure you make that very clear and make sure that you revoke any permission that any of these lower beings these nefarious beings think they have by using your wounds as an entry point like you know your emotional wounds like anger jealousy just revoke that permission and just really make it very clear that you want only guides and beings of the highest good to work on you. And and yeah, get rid of this idea that you don't deserve it. That's something I struggle with. So I, I felt like that was kind of a nod to me. Like you, we all deserve to 
to have work done on us if that's what we want. And so let me know down in the comment section below if this is something you've been doing, what you've noticed, all that kind of stuff. And next week, we will pick up with part one, which is a zoo. Thank you.